what do I have today? Well, new PCBs from JLC PCB. Here they are. And I've waited, uh, I don't know, about a couple of weeks, I think, for these to turn up. And um, I'm pretty excited about getting on and building them. So what are these PCBs? Well, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is put together a couple of tools that I'm going to need for my CPU project that I'm building. So I thought what I'd do is prototype them on PCB and come up with some tools that will be sort of uh, that I can use um, throughout the time that I'm doing this project. So let's have a look at this one first. Um, when you do PCBs from JLC PCB, you get you can get a, a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter PCB manufactured for about two dollars plus um, shipping costs. So it's very cheap. But I thought, because uh, what I'm trying to do is quite a simple thing, I was wondering if I could get two PCBs onto the same PCB. So I made two different circuits. Um, and I put a, a cut mark down the middle of them and you can uh, split it in half and there you go, I've, so I've got two, well my plan was to get two PCBs for two dollars so that would cost me about a dollar each. Um, it didn't quite work out that way because I violated some uh, of the conditions of making PCBs on JLC, JLC PCB. You can't do two circuits on one PCB so that's so I had to pay a surcharge and it ended up costing the same amount of money as it would have done if I'd have made two PCBs. So I won't be doing that again. Um, so then I learnt from that and I produced a second um, PCB. This one is, this one I just made it the size I want it, rather than 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres. I put rounded corners on and I've put some holes for feet to go onto. So I'm quite, quite pleased with these PCBs, I haven't tried any of them out yet. But they look really good quality. I think they're going to work really well. So let's solder one of them up. Okay, so this one first. This is very, very simple. I need to be able to produce an 8-bit binary number and get it into my circuit. So um, this board, it's really just like an input board that inputs um, a binary number, an 8-bit binary number, so a number between 0 and 255. And how it's going to work is there are going to be eight switches along here. So I've got these uh, little blue toggle switches and you'll be able to toggle it backwards and forwards, uh, up and down. And so you'll be able to turn each one of the eight bits on or off. So flick it up for on, flick it down for off. And the combination of all eight of them will give you a binary number. So I'm going to have the number coming out on this output here. I've got bits naught uh, to seven and I've got power and ground on that connector as well um, and then I'm going to show the outputs on here so that's uh, where is it it's a uh, uh, bar graph LED to show the eight outputs and um, with their associated resistors I've got power coming in over here uh, I've got two different ways of getting power in either I was thinking this this is going to be like a crocodile clips power on but I didn't do a very good job of that. Um, here is a 5 volt socket, so I've got a 2.1 mil socket I think that is, which will go in here and um, so I can then input a binary, an 8-bit binary number. Now when you're messing around with binary numbers, adding them together and every, all that kind of stuff, you sometimes need to have an 8-bit number plus carry, so I've got an extra switch just sitting up here, which is going to give me carry. So we've got eight bits plus carry for if we need to do a number or a sum that involves a carry bit. So I think it's time to turn on the soldering iron and get soldering. Well, power seems like a good place to start. So let's get this power connector on. There's quite a lot of metal there and, uh, and quite a small soldering iron tip on actually at the moment. Maybe I should have chosen a bigger one, but there we go. Let's put that in there. And what I'm hoping is if I connect up the power first, I can then just check everything looks all right. Are we getting five volts to the correct places? And I'll probably connect up power and start um, soldering things in. So, uh, and then I can check them as I go along. It's not exactly a, a complex circuit, this one. 
Okay, LED next. So that's the LED bar graph. There are actually there are 10 LEDs here um, in this bar graph, but I am only going to be using eight. So uh, at least I think I am. Did I choose to use carry? Is carry one of them? No, I don't think it is. I don't think I connected up the carry to the um, to the bar graph display. So I'm going to use the middle eight LEDs of the bar graph to, for the eight bits, showing the eight bits of the binary number turning on and off. Do the ends of that first. Check it's lined up. Well, can't really go wrong with that. And um, continue down the line. Should be pretty easy. Uh, the next component is this resistor pack. It's a single in line 331. So that's 330 ohm resistor pack. Ah, ground, ground. There is ground. Continuity. Right. So ground should be connected to there. Oh, it is right, perfect. So the uh, the resistor pack has got a little dot to indicate where the uh, end of the resistor pack is. So I'm going to put that there. That's the ground. So we've got eight resistors, all connected to ground, which will which are the current limiting resistors for the LEDs in there. Let's solder that in. Okay, so I've got my um, bench power supply here and. Uh, so I'm powering this from the mains, uh, well, mains transformer going in here. I'm going to stick this in the other side and we will turn this down to 5 volts and stick it in and see what happens. Okay, so with 5 volts coming in there, we should be able to get, um, if I put a switch, here's my switch, put my switch in there. So we can get that LED to come on, which doesn't show up very well on the camera for some reason. Let me see if I can fix that. Well, I've changed the angle of the lighting slightly and I think it's a little bit better. Um, so I've soldered in one of the switches and with the switch up, we get the light on. With the switch up, down, we get the light off. So I'll solder in the other eight and I'll get a black marker pen and cover over the end two because I don't think that they feature in it anywhere at all uh, and I should have a binary number okay so uh, that's got the switches soldered in they didn't quite go all in completely straight which I was a little bit frustrated by but anyway so let's have a look so we should be able to switch on uh, one so I'm going to color in that last digit there so that's so it doesn't look out of place uh, so we've got one two four eight I've lost count. <laughs> 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. I'm going to switch them all on. Oh, nearly. There we go. So uh, I'll put a socket in here. Um, that's just so I can get the, the. So that's my binary number that I've just made there. So let's make. Hmm, let's make. 10. So 10 will then come out of here. I'm going to. Use this socket to, I'm going to put some, I think I'll get a ribbon cable or something and make it a wire to go into the rest of my project. Um, and that's pretty much that. Okay, well, just to wrap this up, here's the um, the finished product, uh, except for I haven't put the carry switch on yet. And just as a refresher course on binary, um, let's just remind ourselves how binary works. So we've got eight binary digits. Uh, this one has a value of 1, this one has a value of 2, uh, and if we combine 1 and 2 together then we've got 3. This one's got a value of 4, this one's got a value of 1, so 1 and 4, so it's 1, not 2, but there is 4, so 4 and 1 together is 5, uh, 4 and 2 together would be a 6, 4 and 2 and 1 together would be uh, seven, this one's eight, so that would be nine, uh, that would be 10. So what you do is you take whatever the value of the digit, so let's say the most significant digit is 128, uh, the least significant digit is one, You, whichever ones are turned on, you add that amount, whichever ones are turned off, you don't add that amount. So if we pick a number at random, so that, that's going to be 128 plus 1 is 129. Um, so that's how 
that's how binary numbers work. A bit hard to tell though when it's binary. So the next stage of the project is my second PCB. Um, and the second PCB is the, uh, the output section. So this is a very simple input section. Um, the next stage is a very, very simple output section. You can think of this as the world's most primitive keyboard. And this is going to be the world's most primitive screen, I guess.